Hey guys, welcome back. You've actually seen this house before. I've made several videos over here. We made a video on the T-studs and the carrier HVAC system uh, on the insulated floor system. But this is what I would consider a modest house, a little over 2,000 square feet, but it's built really well. On the build show today, we're gonna walk the whole house, outside and inside, and I'm gonna talk you through the specs and the rationale for some of the things that I did, the systems that I use, the wall assemblies, that sort of thing. And I think that if you're building a custom home or if you're a builder, you're gonna learn some things and maybe have some ideas for your next project. So today's build show, reviewing a recently completed house of mine. Let's get going. All right guys, relatively modest front, gorgeous garage door. We spent a lot of money on the garage door and we spent a fair amount of money uh, on the rock facade but the rest of the house is relatively modest on the outside. Let's peel back the onion and talk about the layers. Now framing and everything that happens during that stage is really what sets the basis for the comfort, for the efficiency, for the durability. And on this house, it looks like it's traditionally framed. We've got a one foot or so overhang everywhere. But in reality, this is a monopoly framed house or a perfect wall framed house. Meaning when we framed the walls, the roof line went right down to the walls had no overhangs and we built the overhangs later on top of the roof. That allows me to get a perfect air seal, which by the way, seals for bugs really well, from the foundation all the way to the ridge of the house so that the attic is a conditioned attic and I've got really, really good insulation around the house. Now we made a video on the T-stud framing here. The whole exterior walls are two by six T studs and then we filled the cavity of the walls and the roof line with a couple inches of closed cell foam, actually a really cool, uh, relatively new product from natural polymers. But we finished it off with rock wool on the walls, but on the roof line, especially here in Texas, the fight is in the roof. Uh, we need that wool cap to keep us warm in the winter and to keep the sun out in the summertime. So I do have a metal roof, but underneath that metal roof, I've got four inches of poly iso insulation up there. Now I got this from Hunter Panels and they have a pretty neat system where they have a poly iso that's bonded to a sheathing and you can get that as OSB or plywood. But the air gap layer, I do like air gaps uh, underneath all my roofing. The air gap layer is underneath the plywood. So when you see my vented soffit here, that strip vent that you're seeing underneath the soffit, that's venting underneath the plywood on the roof. So if you think about the assembly, I've got a metal roof uh, here. I've got a shark skin underlayment, which is gonna make sure we don't get any water into the house. And then underneath that first layer of plywood that was made by Hunter Panels, I've got an air layer, a couple layers for four inches and two layers of poly iso foam. And then I've got that monopoly framing underneath. So we added the overhangs later on the house. That really sets the house up for success. Now I like masonry facades whenever we can get them. Masonry's a, I mean, it'll last forever. You never have to paint it, looks amazing. But when you've got a facade that's gonna last that long, you have to realize, okay, how long are my windows gonna last? I might have to replace these windows in 40, 50 years. Let me set the house up for success. So I really like whenever I've got masonry to put some trim on the outside of the windows so that in the future, if I needed to change these windows, no big deal, I could pop the trim and I'm not having to chip out rock. Now these windows are gonna last a long time. These happens to be uh, Shuko that I bought through uh, EAS, European Architectural Supply. They're a UPVC window that has a foil facing. So they actually look a lot like an aluminum clad window, but in fact, they're uh, a little better price being UPVC and really high specs. This is a triple glazed window at what I think is a really good price point much less expensive than an aluminum uh, window or some other more expensive material, but really, really high specs. These are like somewhere around R6 or R6.6 if you look at the U factor. But again, we trimmed them with some Versatech so that later I could pull those off if I needed to. Let's walk around the side of the house. I'll show you a couple more things. Still working on the fence and deck system back here, but I thought I'd stop real quick on the mechanical corral. Uh, we did a video on the carrier system. Uh, just wanna briefly mention, I like how quiet these are. These are running full speed. It's uh, you know 10 o'clock in the morning, the heat's out already. The master bedroom is right here at this pop-out. 
and yet these are no big deal. They're super quiet. Now I don't have my uh, gas line installed yet. We're actually still getting our final inspections. So I don't have the Champion uh, whole house generator hooked up yet, uh, much to my chagrin, because we've had some brownout issues here in Texas. But we're finishing up the deck. Uh, we're finishing up the backyard system right now. The backyard, the back uh, of the house, pretty modest. We use the Laura siding. I'm a big fan of fiber cement. Uh, and this is actually my first time using a Laura. This is their smooth, I believe this is a five inch exposure. I like how traditional it is. It's gonna last for many, many decades. Uh, and the nice thing too about fiber cement is that in my experience, it holds paint much, much longer uh, than a lot of other systems out there. So even though we've got a full painted facade out here, I expect easily to go a decade before we're gonna need to repaint or do anything like that. But look at this view, isn't this great? We've got this gorgeous lake back here. This is actually a quarries lake. Uh, with that being said, let's go to the inside. I'll meet you at the front door. All right, y'all, it's pretty typical for us to buy front doors from the same manufacturer as the window and door package of the house. But as my first time ordering a European door, check this out, it looks like a bank vault. This was built by Shuko, and it was custom built to the architect's specs. It's kind of a weird size, like three foot six by seven or something like that. A little different, I hadn't installed one of these before, but what I really like about it is, check this out, still UPVC, crazy thick, triple glaze, super insulated. It's got two weather strippings, one here on the door itself, and one on the jam. So when this seals, it's just super, super tight. And it's a multi-point locking system, kind of like the windows are in the house. Pretty awesome. We worked with Laura Stockridge at Martha O'Hare Interiors, and I love how traditional the inside of the house. She did a great job on furnishings and keeping it real classy. But this is the money shop. This is the lake right here. We did a nice deck through here. We put a lift and slide uh, from Shuko in here as well. Uh, we added a couple of Marvin Awake skylights this direction to bring some extra light in. Sometimes a house like this, uh, one story, nine foot ceilings, it's nice to have those skylights to bring some extra light into this space. This is actually the first time I put these in before. These Marvin Awakens are unique. Built in blinds, which is kind of nice. Built in lighting system so that you can have some looking like, it looks like uh, the daylight's coming in at nighttime if you want that look. But what I really liked about them when I saw them at IBS is instead of opening traditionally like hinged at the top or the side, these open like this, accordion style. So you've got a bug screen all the way around. So when this unit is open, the bug screen is kind of in the jam space and hides in there. So we won't get mosquitoes in, which are real bad here in Texas. But you don't have to see the screen all the time like you normally would uh, on a opening skylight. Very cool product. Floors, these are just sand and finished floors. I love a good sand and finished uh, white oak floor. But what you can't see here is underneath here, I've got an uh, inch and a half of halo insulation foam on top of the slab. That also helped me because I had some slab abnormalities. This house was a remodel addition. I reused the existing slab on this house. And then where the garage is currently, that's, that's a new pour on this house. And because I had old pour, new pour, the foam allowed me to kind of make those transitions no problem and have this perfectly flat floor. But it also means that I'm fully insulated from the foundation. And this is compared to what I did 10 years ago when I was trying to figure out how to insulate. This is a much better detail. My buddy Steve Basic uh, is the author of this detail and I've used it at my house. I've used it at this house. I've got another project going with the same detail. I really like this. And then we've got a floating subfloor of two layers of Advantech on top of that. And then we nailed these hardwoods traditionally on top of that. And you have no idea that you're not slab on grade, except that we get that little, a little bit of cushion. Uh, this doesn't feel like a hardwood floor that's been glued onto slab. There's just a little bit of give there, which feels really good on your knees. Not a very big kitchen, pretty small, pretty traditional crystal cabinetry like I used at my house. I really like these guys. Uh, I've moved to using all pre-finished cabinetry these days. I don't like to site finish um, more than I have to, although sometimes I do site finish. For instance, we custom built this little desk space in and this was painted on site. And my finished carpenters also built 
this uh, built-in space here where the TV goes. So we custom painted these on site, but for the most part, all the other cabinets are all pre-finished. This room really turned out nice. This is a one-story house. Uh, unfortunately, my mother-in-law passed away. She was never able to move in here, uh, which was a huge bummer for my family, but my father-in-law has enjoyed it. And they figured, uh, you know, as we age, we might need a live-in caretaker. This bedroom is specifically designed so that it's a media room, it's a place to watch the news, but in the future, this could become someone's separate bedroom. So that's why we've got this separate carrier mini split head just servicing this bedroom so that this person living in here could decide what they want. And we did this recessed space that has a couch in it, but that in the future might have a bed space kind of slid in there with two closets kind of hidden into the millwork on either side. And then we've got our own full bathroom right here outside that serves as both a powder bath uh, and a space that someone could have their full bathroom if they, were, if they were living here full time. I thought this turned out really nice. Also, become a big fan of curbless showers. I really like to eliminate that curb whenever possible, especially when you're thinking about aging in place in a house. So that's, that's what we did here. We used the Schluter system to make everything really easy. And I think this really turned out nice. Isn't it funny that wallpaper is coming back in style? We're seeing that in a lot of clients' houses and I like it. I grew up with wallpaper in my house, uh, built in the 50s, uh, when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s and it went out of fad for a long time, but it's kind of back these days. We've got a little passageway here, um, which is both laundry room, drop-off space, and also has my attic access. We'll go up in the attic in a minute, but before we go there, Let's go into the garage. Come on, join me this way. I've become a big fan of putting a mini split head in the garage for not a lot of money. You know, maybe, uh, you know, if you did a DIY system, you could do it for a thousand bucks. This is probably more like two or 2,500 bucks. We've got a mini split head. You can see it's set to 80 degrees. It's just keeping this space tempered. So if you're gonna use this as a second pantry, if you're gonna store, car care products or whatever out here, you can just keep that, that temperature a little bit lower. Now we also did the same insulation strategy in the garage as we did the rest of the house. So this has T-studs with uh, two inches of closed cell foam and then rock wool. But we also did a conditioned attic space. And let's, uh, let me find the cord to bring the attic stairs down. I'll show you the lift to get up there as well because this is a conditioned attic that has some really nice storage space. But before we do that, one last thing, let me show you the mechanical space out here. I don't like putting water heaters up in attics, but we don't have basements. So the architect did a nice job, Kit Johnson, of giving us a space for a heat pump water heater. This happens to be a Ream 80 gallon. Uh, my in-laws, I didn't necessarily need an 80 gallon. We could have probably done the 50, but I thought, you know, who knows what will happen in the future. Uh, so let's put the bigger model in for not that much more money. I really like these. As you can tell, it's running and it's pretty quiet. I did make one mistake in this room, however, though. We've got a solid door coming in and you can see there's no vents on the ceiling. This room gets pretty cold. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna retrofit a bath fan into the ceiling. We'll put like a Panasonic or a Fantech exhaust fan. It'll use 10 watts. It'll always be pulling, let's say 50 CFM out of here and we'll put a pass-through vent in the wall, maybe over the door. We could even put one through the door. But this space is part of the garage space, and the framing that's on this wall here that separates the garage from the house goes all the way to the roof deck, and I put zip sheathing on this wall all the way to the roof deck, all on this wall as well, and then I sealed with tape all the joints, and we sealed with either tape or, um, liquid flash between the zip sheathing and the roof so that this garage is totally isolated. I didn't want fumes or if someone stores gasoline or anything in the future in this garage from getting into the house. And oftentimes when people are spray foaming, they'll just net that spray foam or they'll just put thermoply up. I really like having that zip sheathing on there because then I know I've got a really good air seal and I'm not just relying on the spray foam to air seal. Um, we set up this room for a traditional salt-based softener system, um, but, but my client did not want that kind of uh, slimy feeling of the salt-based softeners. 
And I found this Nuvo H2O when my house is under construction and I had planned not to use a softener because my wife felt the same way. But I installed this at my house, I actually just serviced it recently and changed the, uh, the citrus cartridge. It's pretty impressive. It's, it's, uh, they call themselves a softener, but I would consider it a conditioner. What it's doing is the citrus that this cartridge is injecting into the water line is keeping scale from forming on any of your fixtures, appliances, water heater, that sort of thing. But it's not using a traditional salt with all the disadvantages of having to replace the salt, having to have a drain so you're flushing, using electricity, that sort of thing. This is a static system that all you need to do is just change that cartridge out every six months. So we're gonna be installing that. Stay tuned, we'll probably make a video about that. Okay, here is the pull down stair handle. Let's see if I can get this thing on. Looks like we got a little touch up on that door too, we gotta do. There we go. This is a Fakro brand. I like them, I like Rainbow as well. Uh, a little bit nicer than the standard uh, ones you buy at the home center. This accordion style is kind of cool. Okay, where's the light for up here? Here we go. Looks like we gotta clean up a little bit up here still, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. That zip sheathing we brought all the way up to the roof deck here, and we taped it completely. What you can't see is behind this spray foam here, we either use tape or liquid flash as well because this is the roof sheathing right above this spray foam. And so we're fully separated from the house. Now we're insulated on the other side of this wall, but this wall is a really, really good air seal and that's what we wanted here. And th this attic, just like the other attic, two inches of closed cell foam. And then on top of that, uh, we have four inches of poly iso. This kind of whitish coating you see here this is DC315, uh, which uh, I can't remember the manufacturer's name. I'll put a link in the description. It's an intumescent paint. Uh, it's kind of, it, if I remember correctly, it's a paint that has like a chalk in it. So that if there was a fire that broke out here in the attic, it would actually kind of blow up and uh, not blow up. That's a bad word. It would expand <laughs> and protect the foam behind it from heat and from flame spread. Depending on your phone manufacturer, you need to check your ICCES report. That's a long word, but it's basically a fancy term to say, hey, what, what does code require for the type of foam that you're spraying for fire resistance and fire spread resistance? But now we've got this nice big attic storage space for uh, storing all kinds of things within the general condition envelope of the house. Ever seen one of these before? The Magic Attic Lift. It's a, uh, a lifter system to get stuff from the garage to your attic. Let's just use that as a for example. Check this out. Press the little remote button. It's gonna head downstairs for me. Load up whatever you want. And press the button and boom, it just brings it right into your attic space. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna be using these more often. I used their magic stairs at my house but wasn't able to do it here in this house, unfortunately because when the stairs in my house go up, they need a fair amount of uh, attic space beyond the stair hatch. Uh, you know, like for instance, this stair here, see we've only got a few feet behind it. The stairs if, uh, at my house that are the magic stairs come up and then angle down. So all this framing here would have been in the way to do it in this attic. And we weren't unfortunately able to do it in the other attic. Speaking of attics, this is a garage attic. Let's go back and check out the house attic. Okay, now main house attic. I can't remember if this is a Fakro or what we used here. Another slightly non-standard one. Let's see what this one is. Put this down here. The only bummer about this attic ladder is the stairs themselves are a little narrow. And when you get to this, uh, yeah, this is Fakro as well. When you get to the, the board that it's on, it, uh, oh, you know what? I think it's adjustable. I just fixed my own problem. I gotta slide this out, that'll fix it. Your feet don't fit in very well. Looks like I just need to adjust it. Okay, I love these conditioned attics. Or maybe, I don't know, three, four degrees hotter than the rest of the house up here and that's it. So all this storage space, we don't have much stored up here, but this is basically air conditioned storage space. Again, a couple inches of closed cell foam up here. 
Now all of my duct work is within the air conditioned space of the house. Got my low voltage panel up here. I've got my dehumidifier up here. Uh, that's also providing a little bit of dehumidified air for the attic space. I've got my Zender fresh air system over here. Uh, my carrier uh, heat pump right here with a really nice carrier uh, filtration system as well. The other nice thing about this one story house is we made it walkable through the attic to anywhere in the house. So this ceiling vault you see right here is that living room ceiling we showed you earlier. And then beyond that, I'll take you downstairs in a minute, master bedroom, guest bedrooms. Not super easy to go over there, but we can climb anywhere. So if we needed to add a wire in the future, let's say, we can get anywhere in the house. But the big thing that I wanna mention up here in this space is that 99.99% .99 of the Texas attics you go in, they're brutal, they're super hot, the equipment's just baking, it's sweating, you're seeing mold growth in the ductwork because of that crazy hot atmosphere. The other thing you're seeing in most attics in Texas and in the South, rat droppings everywhere. Uh, the pest guy is coming up here and doing pesticides for roaches and all that kind of stuff. And we don't see any of that and we won't see any of that in this house. This house is fully sealed at the zip sheathing because of that monopoly framing. And then I doubled up uh, my insurance by using some closed cell foam uh, in this roof line as well to make sure that everything is super, super air sealed which by the way means it's super bug sealed. This is how I think you're gonna sell these types of systems to your clients. Cause yes, this is more expensive. We spend another few days of framing labor, framing this house, monopoly framing, and we spend a few extra dollars. Uh, I don't know the exact dollar amount, but probably not more than let's say 2,500 or 3,500 bucks by using closed cell spray foam in the roof line to create this conditioned attic space rather than using traditional blown in in this space right here, which would have been really hard to do, by the way, with all the penetrations trying to air seal these and put insulation down. Making an attic like this a conditioned attic makes so much sense. And I really wanna encourage you guys to think about doing monopoly framing in your projects. Think about it though before construction begins, cause you gotta think about how you're gonna make overhangs, how you're gonna make that house look good and maybe even look traditional. But man, this makes a big difference. That being said, let's go downstairs. We'll finish up the tour on a couple things inside. All right, I love a good attic. And notice no insulation on this door and no worries for air sealing on this door like I would be worried about uh, if it was a traditional attic. Kind of a cool little closet right here with a barn door. Uh, by the way, check out this hardware. This is um, cavity slider hardware, originally from New Zealand soft close so it doesn't slam closed. Closes off the closet if you needed to close off the laundry for a party. Uh, and the doors in this house are all from wood grain. These are inch and three quarter custom doors. I, I like the shaker style with just a single uh, square edge, uh, custom made size wise for us uh, by wood grain, but they've got a lot of different options. Let's head over to the master bedroom and guest bedroom side of the house. I forgot to mention too, real nice butler's pantry. We did spend a few bucks and do some nice appliances. We've got uh, an oven here in the butler's pantry area. We've got a little wine fridge right here uh, underneath this bar top. This is gonna be a great place to serve at parties or Thanksgiving dinners, that sort of thing. The guys at uh, Crystal did custom panels and David Betts, which is my local crystal uh, dealer with Benchmark Kitchens and Baths, uh, did all these panels, installed everything, did a real nice job. Microwave here above, single oven below. I don't like those ovens going too low, so it's nice to bring those ovens up. Uh, we went with gas cooktop. That was a requirement of my mother-in-law. She wouldn't do the uh, induction cooktop like I did at my house. So we have a couple of uh, gas appliances here, but that allowed us to have a natural gas line for that champion generator we're about to install. Let's come back around here. I think I mentioned earlier, this was a, a remodel of uh, an existing slab. All the framing was new, but we used the existing slab. And so we went with a lot of the existing plumbing layouts and this was the original hall bathroom layout. So we kept that tub here. Uh, I like, Subway tile, big fan of that. We used uh, a Schluter uh, 
uh, edge where you've got some details for that subway towel to come in. This is actually the first time though that we used a uh, hydro defense from Hardy Backer on this tub. It's a, it's a pretty cool product that's a cement based backer that I've used a lot of uh, over the years with a built in waterproofing so you don't have to use like Red Guard or something like we've done over the years when we've done cement based Hardy Backer. So that was pretty cool. And again, great wallpaper selection. Isn't this beautiful? Laura did a great job in the interiors on this house. Master bedroom's pretty modest. Uh, one change to this remodel slab was the master was tight, so we bumped this out. We saw that outside because all those utilities are right there, but this is a bumped out section uh, that allowed us to get light on a couple of sides as well, rather than just one side. And, uh, and then a nice, but not super uh, over the top master uh, bath, master shower area. Again, we use Schluter for all this, so this is all uh, no curb on the shower. Just turned out real, real nice. I'm happy with all this turned out. Closet here and uh, window inside the toilet room to bring in a little bit of light. We went with level five smooth drywall in this project, and that's really my favorite. I did that at my house. I really do that on most houses. It's a little bit more expensive but man, it just gives a really nice finish. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about drywall, uh, over on buildshownetwork.com, Lydia Crowder, AKA Drywall Shorty, is making one new video a week about her drywall contracting business up in Bozeman. She's got a lot of videos about level five smooth and how to achieve that. But in this particular space, this is where all the, uh, all the problems come in. We've got a skylight, we've got raking light, we've got this big tunnel. This is difficult to get all these angles correct. So we use a couple of trim text profiles to get those inside corners and to get these crisp outside corners that are a little more abuse friendly. Uh, but I really like how that skylight brings light into this space that normally would be dark. We didn't want to have a window or light well into the shower. So instead we moved it out here. Uh, big kudos to the architect kit on that design. I really like that. That also allowed us to put the Zender ERV exhaust vent a little bit higher in that space. And funny enough, this window is a last minute addition. Uh, this was actually an extra window from my house that as we walked the construction, uh, we realized, gosh, it's really dark in this space. So we added that window last minute. I'm sure glad we did. Let's go see the other bedrooms over here. Oh, I do want to mention the ceiling, by the way. Uh, Patrick and Dan, my carpenters, uh, actually mainly Patrick from Tube, did a really nice job on this. This is all Windsor One trim, kind of like what I used at my house. And that's a fake beam. Uh, it's plywood, oak plywood. And I can't remember if we bought four by tens instead of four by eights. Boy, Patrick did a really nice job of seaming that. So you, you can't tell very easily that it's not one big piece of oak up there, but I thought that turned out real nice. And then we've got two additional bedrooms. This is really more of a workout space and a desk area. And the last bedroom over here, guest bedroom, set up for grandkids or a guest to come. This is a really nice space. This is the only uh, bypass door in the house. And we also use cavity slider hardware. Look how easily that slides, isn't that nice? They do make a soft close kit for this as well. We didn't install it on this uh, house because this is not a main used door, but super smooth glide. I really like that. Isn't that a pretty house? Really well built, really nice, very functional. We've got a little bit more to go. We were about 98% <clears throat> with a little bit of punch. There's a, believe it or not, there's a wall going in here with a gate and a patio space for a little bit more of security for an older couple. But man, I love how it turned out. Big thanks to all my subs, suppliers, all the folks involved in this project. Really, really turned out nice. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, over on Build Show Network, there's two new videos posted every single day. Sign up for our newsletter in the description, so I'll send you an email on Tuesdays and Fridays to tell you what's new on that site. Follow me on Instagram or TikTok, otherwise we'll see you next time on the Build Show.